a spot release a new lead scoring app and I think it was a good moment for us to talk about lead scoring in general and to see how to use this new lead scoring app was different with the old one, the pros and cons, etc. So if you don't get it yet because it's a beta, you can click here, go to product update, type lead scoring, choose the good one and click join the beta. Once you join it, you can click on marketing go down and choose lead scoring here. Once that's done, you will arrive in that page, which will be the list of all the lead scoring properties you would have created for your portal. Before creating our own score, let's see what was the lead scoring before. So before we could do lead scoring with, with what we call score properties. And Uspot gives us a native score property that you can find it under settings, properties, contact properties, and choose score. It's this one and when you click on edit so you can see that it's a really different property than the other one because it's kind of an interface to build a score. What a score is, a score is the sum of positive points and negative points based on specific criteria. So basically how it works, if a lead is or do something that match your criteria, you give him points and when a lead do or is something you don't like, you remove points. For instance, if a lead go to your website and visit the pricing page, you can give it 10 points. Or if your lead is identified as a decision maker, you put yes and you give him, I don't know, 20 points. But in the opposite, if a lead have a bad list status, such as list status is any of unqualified or bad timing, you can remove 10 points. And if his last activity date is more than, I don't know, one month, you can take off 20 points. Basically, is how it works. The score, we simply do the sum of all the positive points minus all the negative points. And at the end, you will get a score between minus 50 to 50 or to 100, etc, etc. This was supposed to help us pre-raising our sales effort by focusing on the most promising leads. And the thing is, everyone is talking about discovering. Every company wants to implement a discovering strategy in their activity. But the truth is, I never found it that much useful. It only makes sense when you have thousands of new leads incoming again and again, or if you basically scrap all your industry email address, put them on your CRM and just want to do a first selection. But when you see a score of, I don't know, 55, for instance, you don't really understand what does that really mean. That's why I always do what I call in-breed situation, which is First, we did a qualification workflow. We make sure this lead match everything we need to be able to sell our product. And then when the lead is qualified, we can apply a lead scoring to just prioritize them. But once you qualified your leads already, you realize that you might have enough time to contact them all. So now that I say how oh, the old score work and why I didn't like it that much. So let's see how this new lead scoring app, if it's fixed with issue, if it's things that are better or things that are worse than this previous system. So once again, you click on marketing and go to up lead scoring. And the first thing we realize is that is way more visual. We see that we have different scores by objects, contact, company, and by type, fit and engagement. So that's something new and we will see what does that mean. First thing we realize is when we click on create score is that we can choose the object we want to score. It seems like it's an improvement because now we can score contact and companies, but actually in our old system, we can create a score property for any object we want. Now you can't score deals before you could. But the main new thing is now you can score engagement score and fit score. What are the difference? Engagement score is mostly you will rate the different events and activity a lead do with your company. And the contact fit score is basically a good match a contact or a company is for your business. So if I have to give different name, I would say interest score and qualification score. So once we saw that, we can decide to create either a contact engagement score or contact fit score. For this example, I will create a contact engagement score with you and after I will show you an example of this score I already did. So we click on contact engagement score and we click on create and now there is a lot of things we should talk about. First of all now we have a score limit of 100 points 
that we didn't have on this previous spot score. It means that at least the barema is clear. Every score will go until 100 points maximum. And the first thing we see here, instead of adding positive criteria or negative criteria, is we can add what we call event group. It's event because it's engagement score. For the fifth score, it will be fit group. You click on add event group and you have your first group. You don't need to have several, but you can. What's interesting is that you can choose to separate this 100 points into different groups. Let's say we want to try the engagement score. So what's matter for us would be, for instance, the engagement with our web page, website and the engagement with our marketing email communication. We think both are as important as each other. So we want to separate our tracking into two groups. 50 points will be allocated to the website. So just rename it website. And the other group will be 50 as well. And it will be related to email activity. So now we notice that we can really divide our 100 points into different close category. Of course, if you think website is more important than email, you can put 70. It will tell you that there is 20 points remaining and you put 30. Everything is good. You can add as much even group as you want, but for this example, I think two is enough. It works the same way. Let's go back to 50 for this example. So now that we create group, let's see what does that mean. You open your group and you can see that you can add event criteria. Basically, it's the only thing we can do. So let's do it. And now a spot will sort all the different even that a lead can have with our CRM, which is ads, calls, CTA, documents for marketing email, etc., etc. What we want to track is our website event and the form they will fill on our website. Let's start with the web event. The good thing about the web event is that there is only one event is the page visited. So if you let it like that, it means that every time a lead will visit a web page of your website, you will get one point. But because our group score limit is 50 points, if he visits more than 50 pages, it will be capped at 50 points maximum. But the thing is, we can add more criteria out of it to make it more complex. For instance, every page visit is one point, but if someone visits my pricing page or my contact us page, I think it's really a good signal that a lead is engaged. So I can add this criteria. I still select page visited and I click on filter so I can be more precise. What I want is to check if the page title contains any of pricing or contact. Because it's a good engagement sign, I want to give it 20 points because if someone look at that i can say oh okay he's really interested in to having a conversation with me because as i said it's a really good indication in that case every time they will visit a web page it will be one point and every time they will visit a web page containing pressing or contact they will get 20 points maximum will be of course 50. we can be even more precise saying the score individually, it means I can give a different score for pricing and for contact. So pricing, yes, it's 20, but contact maybe is just 15. And by doing so, we have mapped our different page visit even for our engagement score. But now within our website, we want to track also if they fill a specific form. So we can add more events and choose form. So we see that form and web events are still under the website group that is limited to 50. And we select an event, let's say form submission. And same thing, every time they fill a form, I want to give them 10 points, but if they fill, I don't know, a meeting form, which is like way better than a newsletter form, for instance, form name is any of meeting, for instance, I want to give them 25 points. And now we can say that we finish our web event, so or we can allocate a maximum of 50 points out of our 100 points. But there is one more thing we can do is like, for instance, if they visit 50 web pages, they got 50 points, even though they didn't submit any form. So we want to create more rules to make sure that they got a maximum of points if they fill at least one form. So how to do so, you can just here cap inside of the group, you can cap this specific event to a certain number of points. We know that a form submission is 10 points. So we want to cap the web event limit to 40 points. That way, they can visit every page they want. They will get a maximum of 40, and they can get the 50 only if they have 10 points. But in the opposite, if they book two meetings with this 
link we will go 25 times 2 because here is not caps and we don't need to visit any web page we will get a 50 group score so that was an example but you can obviously do the rules you want the cap you want and all the different criteria you want one thing I like is that you can also click on decay score and your points will get reduced by the percentage you want every one month, three months, six months, 12 months. It's a bit sad that we can't get more into details into the frequency because if you have a really short sales cycle, it doesn't make sense that much, but at least it's here and maybe it will get updated later. So we finish our 50 points for website and we can now create our email points and let's say if they click a link in emails is 10 points and if they reply is 25 points you can also add the decay if you want and for instance as a web page you can choose exactly the mail co that correspond to what you want etc you don't need to do it but you can do it and then you have a engagement score based 50 50 with website activities and emails and in website activities we have a maximum of 40 points allocated to website visit and forms that have no limit and co can go up to 50 points once you're happy with your score you can go to contacts and that's a new thing you can say to score all the contact of your database you can exclude contact from a specific list or you can in the opposite only score contact from up to five lists it's really good because you can create different scores. Let's say in your database you have clients, lead, and partners. You want to do a list scoring as a loyalty score for your clients. You don't want this score to be pushed on all your leads, but only on your clients. So you can say, okay, only my clients will get this score. And if you have like a classic list scoring to see if a lead will be a client, you can apply it only to the leads. So once you decide who is going to be scored, the last thing you need to do is go to settings. You give it a name because it will create a property. So you will use it as any other property in a spot. It will show up in your contact records. And you can also define the score threshold that will separate your leads into low, medium or high. And you can play with the points to adjust what you consider as low, medium, or high potential. So when you're happy about everything, give it a name, review, and turn it on. So that was our example for engagement list scoring. Now let's see the fit list scoring, and I prepare a company fit to show you that you can do it with contacts and company. So as we said, a fit score is much more a score that will determine if this company is a good fit for your product or your business. I decided to do a simple score based on two groups, so it works a bit like the engagement score. Our first group is what I call demographic, that we play for 80% of the score. And the second one is source, that we play for 20%. If we open the demographic, we can see that I will check the country, if it's part of my market, I give 20 points. If the industry is something I'm interested in, so if it's accounting, it will be 20 points. If it's airline aviation, 15. If it's architecture planning, 10 points. I will check if the annual revenue is more than 1 million and add 20 points. And if the number of employees is greater than 50, and I will add 20 points. If you do the maximum, it's 20, 20, 20, 20. It's 80 points. And for this 20 last points, I just want to check if the original source is none of offline source. It means the company came to my hotspot with marketing efforts or referrals, these kind of things, but not import ID. And if it's the case, so if the company had an action to come to me, I will add them 20 more points. So as you can see, it doesn't need to be really complex, but you can do whatever you want, add more complexity, etc. Then it works the same. You can choose the list of companies you want to exclude or to include in this contact fee score, and you can play with the score threshold. And why I show you the company fee score before the contact fee score is because you can use the company fee score as one of the criteria for the contact fee score. So I open the example I created, and as we can see, I create three group this time 30 points will go to the sales channels 25 will go for the company fit and 45 will go for the decision maker so decision maker is basically a property that fits my ideal consumer for instance his job title should be either ceo founder director manager cmo cfo for 15 points if the decision maker is any of yes 20 points and if the buying world is any of champion budget holder decision maker it's 10 points 
So that's a classic fit score. But for the 55 remaining points, I want to add 25 points if is associated to a company that have a score greater than or equal to 80. And if it's the case, I add 25 points to this contact fit score. And the last one is the sales channel. I give 10 points per way of contacting this lead. So if I know his phone number is 10 points, if his email is a professional email address, I give 10 points. And if is, I know his LinkedIn profile, I will add 10 more points. So that's another way to create this fit score. You can do as we did for the other one, all the phrase and the list exclusion. You review a new update. And so now you see most of the possibilities you can do with its list scoring app. They mentioned that you, there is a possibility to use AI to predict the score of new incoming links and stuff that is reserved to the enterprise spot plans. And I didn't really try it yet. So now that we see everything that it can do, just want to let you know that in comparison with the first one, we can't attribute negative points anymore. It's not something bad, but is something we need to know when it comes to defining our list scoring strategy. But a good thing compared to this whole system is now you can be way more precise in terms of how you allocate points and you have a defined barema, which is 100. But when it comes to the rule of lead scoring in our strategy, I still didn't change my mind because, okay, you can give way more precise points, but at the end, you still see a global score and it's still required to have a qualification workflow in the first place to, first of all, identify if a lead will be a good fit or not. So my recommendation would be to create kind of a hybrid system with a qualification workflow and those new list scoring if you want. I hope this video really helped you to understand how to use this new list scoring app and how to generate those new lead scoring properties. And speaking of properties, you can find in the description below a private web page where I shared all my tips and best practices on how to manage existing hotspot properties and how to create them to make sure your hotspot portal is the cleanest possible. It was Greg, I wish you a great day and see you soon.